I, I want you to know I want to be as charitable and loving and respectful with this as, as, as I can. I am not requiring sinless perfection. But we need to be on the same page in terms of identifying sin for what it is. I don't think we do anybody any favors if we tell them they don't have to deal with sin in their life. Be a member of our church, you have to be able to identify those two important aspects that we've talked about before, God and the gospel. You've got to get God right and you've got to get the gospel right. Now, on this subject, because I believe that homosexuality is a sin, I also believe that we must identify it as a sin. And what are we supposed to do with sin in our lives as Christians? We're supposed to repent of it and believe. And so, I would encourage, for example, the previously mentioned homosexual couple that wanted to come to our church. More than welcome, happy to have them there. But if they met with me and said, we want to become members, I would sit down with them. I sit down with everybody who wants to become a member of our church. And I would sit down with them and I would say, okay, here is the standards of our church. And there's an obvious issue we need to address here. And that is your, your, your guys' relationship. You know, we need to talk about it. And I think that, you know, the scriptures are clear on this topic. You know, we love having you guys here. I'm so happy that you, you guys spend time with us here. Um, and I know it's not easy to come into a place like this where you, you know that a lot of people might hold different views than you on this topic. And so we love that you're here. But in order to be a member in our church, we require a repentance from sin and faith in Jesus Christ. And because the Bible identifies this behavior as sinful, if you guys are going to become members, I need to ask that you repent of it. And so I'm not going to draw any lines in the sand on exactly what this looks like in this complex situation that we're in now. But if you guys are interested in exploring that with me, I will be here. I want to talk with you guys and work with you guys through the topic. But so long as they wanted to maintain their homosexual relationship in terms of practicing it, not in terms of preference. I don't, I don't believe that being attracted to members of the same sex is sinful. Being physically attracted to them, I don't think that is sinful. So, some would say that, I don't think so. But I think it's acting on those attractions. Okay. And so, I, I, would, I would say that, look, we need to... We need to work towards the elimination of sin. Again, not, not you have to be completely perfect and pure and all this type of stuff in order to be a Christian. But this is something where we can't be out, outwardly, actively practicing something that the Bible identifies as sin. And so we need to work with you on how we can repent of this behavior before God. And I, I would come along beside that couple with as much love and compassion as I could to, to help them work through that. But I don't, I, I genuinely believe that we don't do anybody any favor favors if we tell them their sin doesn't matter, they don't have to repent of it. Part of the freedom of Christianity is to call sin for what it is and to submit ourselves to God. That is part of the freedom of Christianity. That is part of the beauty. And we're actually withholding a vital element of the gospel, of Christianity, from people if we do not help them to work through those issues as they're biblically presented. I believe the Bible is true, has genuine wisdom for our lives, and we need, we will do well if we are do our best to submit to it with our lives. And telling a whole group of people that certain behaviors aren't sin, that the Bible identifies as sin, I don't think is doing them any favors. PJ says, same you would do for any unmarried couple living together. Yeah. That, that's a similar situation. Just a different form of sexual sin there. Anybody is welcome to attend. But if you become a member, you become one of my sheep, and I am accountable for your soul before God. And I take that very seriously. Wherecat says, if 
We're talking about alternative lifestyle couple that have a predetermined relationship. Doesn't it strike you as slightly unreasonable to withhold membership unless they were to repent and stop sinning? Because the practicality of them repenting and no longer sinning would, in my perspective, only be to break up, which seems like drawing a line in the sand while refusing to admit you're drawing a line in the sand. I, I like how you put that, Werecat, and I see what you're saying. We are not requiring sinless perfection of people to become members. But if we have a fundamental disagreement about what sin in what sin looks like and what it's what it is in our lives, then we need to work through that, I think, before somebody is becoming willing before somebody becomes a member. If somebody come, becomes a member of our church, what they are doing is formally submitting themselves to my authority as the spiritual leader and guide in their life. And I, I, we're uh, inducting new members this upcoming Sunday. So I've been working through some of this stuff recently that we are saying as a group, the people that come to me and myself, we are saying that you guys are wanting to call me your pastor. You guys are wanting for me to be a spiritual authority and leader in your guys' lives. In order for me to do that, we need to be on the same page in terms of what is sin and what isn't sin, okay? And if we're not on the same page, as far as that goes, then we're going to have difficulties and issues in terms of you seeking out your relationship before God. So, I understand what you're saying, Werecat. Practically speaking, it looks like a line in the sand while I'm trying not to say that it is. But I, I think it would be important for us to work that out and for us all to get on the same page before they became a member. That way, we're working towards the same ends in terms of their relationship before God and my responsibility before God for their soul. Let, let's say, here's a different example, okay? And please know I'm not comparing homosexuality to this. I'm just trying to identify different categories of sin. Let's say somebody showed up and they said, I want to be a member of the church and they were an alcoholic, okay? And I was like, okay, you know, let's talk about your testimony. Okay, you have a background of alcoholism. Um, how are you doing right now with alcohol? Oh, I'm doing great. I have a, um, I, I have a 12 pack every night and it's like, um, what? Yeah. I just 12 pack every night when I get home from work and that's what I do. Okay. Hold on a second. You're an alcoholic. You struggle with this. It's caused damage to your relationships. We need to recognize that God would not have you to be drinking alcohol in, in your situation. Oh, no, I don't think that's a sin. There's nothing wrong with what I'm doing at all. Y yes, there very much is, you know, and, and I'm not against alcohol de facto. But for this individual, for their life, this is a problem. And I think in that situation, I re would require of them to recognize with me your alcoholism is a sin. God would have you to repent of it and you would he would have you to turn from it. We need to get on that same page before you can become a member. Now, you don't need to be entire, entirely cured of your alcoholism, but we need to get on the same page that this is a sin and you shouldn't be participating in this. That way, when it comes to helping you out in your spiritual walk with God and in your growth and your relationship with him, I we can actually be working towards the same ends. Otherwise, let's imagine we just adopted them as a member, irrespective of that. And then they start coming to me and they're having all these problems and difficulties in their life. And I keep pointing out, um, are you still drinking a 12 pack a night? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's related to this issue. No, no, I don't think it's related at all. I, I just don't think I'd be able to be much of much help. I think we need to be on the same page there. And so similarly, where cat, I think if a couple came to me, they, they said, Hey, we're married. This is legal in, in our state. We're married and we would love to become members of the church. I think I would have to say, I believe the Bible makes this clear that this is sin and I am not, you know, I, I don't, I'm not requiring of you that instantly right now, um, you guys immediately get divorced and all of that stuff. 
we need to work through this because this is a complex and difficult situation. But I want you to know that I believe the Bible identifies this as sinful behavior. I believe it's not what God would have for you and it's not God's best for you. And if you are going to come under my spiritual leadership as a member of this church, then I believe God would have you to repent of this behavior. Now let's work through this together on how we can get that done. And I don't know what the details would look like. I don't know if it would take us six months of working through the Bible and, and all that type of stuff. It might. But if we start off with somebody submitting to my spiritual leadership, but having a completely different understanding and idea of what following God looks like in their life, I think we're going to have a problem from the very get-go. I, I want you to know I want to be as charitable and loving and respectful with this as, as, as I can. I am not requiring sinless perfection, but we need to be on the same page in terms of identifying sin for what it is. I don't think we do anybody any favors if we tell them they don't have to deal with sin in their life. I think we actually remove a significant portion of gospel effectiveness in their lives if we tell them sin doesn't matter for them. And so this all, this all does stem from the fact that I think the Bible clearly teaches this. I think it clearly teaches it in many places. And that's where I have to go. Believe me, it would be much easier if the Bible did not treat homosexuality this way. If, if it essentially identified it as a neutral matter that were up to the individual, it'd be much easier for me to address this. It would. And in some ways, I kind of envy having that sort of stance. But when I sit and read the Bible as fairly as I can, I have to conclude that homosexuality is sinful and it's damaging to the individual who's practicing it. And I want the best for them. And that might mean telling them something that they don't want to hear. That says, we had two individuals in youth group. Both had abusive drug addict per parents. They both left the homes as soon as they could. At a very young age, they were on their own. Sometime around 18, they found each other and were all the other had. They began living together. Both were out of their parents' care and taking care of each other. The only thing they didn't do was legally get married because in our state, you have to have written consent from parents when under 22 years of age. Yeah, that's a rough situation. And here's what, here's what I think we often do. I'm glad you brought that up, Matt. Here's what I think we often do. The Bible's black and white on this. Yeah, but my, my life situation's a little gray, isn't it? No. No. It's black and white. Stop it. We need to help people work through their gray lives and situations as appropriately as we can. Yes, we want to honor God's direction and instruction for our lives. Nobody's questioning that. But how we go about doing that, I think, is very important. So th these two people in Matt's case obviously need people to come alongside them and help them and guide them and give them direction. Hey guys, Pastor Channer here, and we try to answer a lot of people's questions here on the channel. If you have your own question that you would like to ask, please put it in the comments below, and we'll try to answer it as soon as we can. We may even make a video about it in order to address it, okay? So thanks for being here. Take care. God bless. Bye now. If you like this video, you might like this other one as well because these topics are very, very similar. Hope that helps. Take care. God bless. Bye now.